Vinny Tortorich here. Hey, man, if you're a fan of Izzy, you might be a fan of me, too. I'm the guy that gets people to lose a lot of weight. I have something free for you guys. This is no clickbait. Just go to VinnyTortorich.com, and there's a big banner. It's a free PDF, How to Lose Weight. It's an intro guide to NSNG at VinnyTortorich.com. Go check it out exclusively for anyone who listens to Izzy Presley. Thank you. Replay Guitar Exchange is your premier independent guitar store. Being independent is good. With all of the major brands, including new, vintage, and pre-owned, you can find the guitar, bass, amp, or accessory you are dreaming of. From vintage to the newest models, Replay Guitar Exchange can help you find that perfect piece. They have industry veteran expert staff, all players like you, down to the owner. You aren't just getting a great guitar, you're getting the replay difference. Find them online at replayguitar.com and find your dream guitar today. Hey ladies, Sass Pants Designs will take that rock shirt that everyone has and make it your own in a flattering, sassy, and simple way. There are one-of-a-kind tank tops, lace-up tees, and tube top dresses already in stock. Check out the online store at sasspantsdesigns.com and like Sass Pants Designs on Facebook for special offers and custom orders. That's sasspantsdesigns.com, sasspantsdesigns.com. Sass Pants will make you the envy of the party. RockstarLeatherworks.com is your home for badass rock and roll gear. Featuring 100% handmade leather bands, watches, cuffs, bracelets, and more, Rockstar Leatherworks has something for everybody. Whether you are going to the show or you are in it, you can find something to fit your needs. Choose from a variety of designs or create your own masterpiece. Their bands and watches are second to none. They also ship internationally. Who needs a stage to be a rock star? Check out RockstarLeatherworks.com. Would I listen to Izzy Presley? Ooh, not if he was the last disc jockey on earth, honey. The unscripted, uncensored, loose cannon of commentary. Why did you say that? Why? Why? Can you come out with stink like that? Poop. Your poop mouth. Poop out of your mouth. See, son? Old legends never die. They just lose weight. Like a legend and an out-of-work bum look a lot alike, Danny. I've got a midget friend, an albino friend, and another friend who thinks Lord of the Rings is real. Together we call ourselves the Unfuckables. When time is in, let the fun begin. Party time. You got you an asshole, man. <laughs> What's up, Hollywood? What's up, world? What's up, my loyal minions? It is good to see you, and it's always good to be seen. I am Izzy Presley, and this is the Izzy Presley Show via... Another effing podcast. I was, uh, I'm not going to lie, I was too hungover to do a show yesterday. <laughs> Eliza and I went out after the show and uh, on Wednesday and <coughs> and uh, we got a little schnookered. So, um, and I don't perform well when I'm hungover in many aspects. Just ask all the women that I've boned. But um, I figured, you know what, I... I, I I was off for so long that I should at least do one Izzy Presley show this week and then try to get back on uh, on track next week. We will see. We will see. Because um, I have questions. I have thoughts about um, if this is viable, um, if this is worth it. And uh, well, we'll get into that later. We got a lot to talk about today. Um, Tool overtaking Taylor Swift. And the response from her fans. Um, Nicki Minaj uh, retiring from her quote-unquote music genre. Or just music in general. Quote-unquote. Because I don't know if we really want to call that music. Big loss. <laughs> well, bye. And uh, we're going to talk about the Facebook dating app. Because, uh, you know, like all the other ones, I'm there. You know, why not? Why not? I should be. I should be on my way to the Hollywood Bowl right now, which I am not. Um, I got a text saying that, hey, Izzy, there are tickets available for Barry Manilow this evening for $25. And I thought, well, that's more than I have in my account. Um, So I'm not going to Barry Manilow tonight or tomorrow night. Unfortunately, I do not get to see the white Barry once again and it really saddens me because Barry Manilow is an icon 
Barry Manilow is an American hero. Barry Manilow wrote the songs. Barry Manilow is an amazing entertainer. And God damn it, I want to see him live just so I can say I saw him live. He was a joke to all of us metalheads for years and years and years. But like the Bee Gees, you listen to him and go, God damn it, he's good. God damn, is he good. The Bee Gees, there's disco, and then there's the Bee Gees. They are in a fucking category all their own. And Manilow, the white berry, is that as well. And I have been a Manilow fan for a few years. I'm not saying I've been a Manilow fan my whole life. But the past few years, I have come to very much respect the White Berry and the amazing music that he has put out over his long and illustrious career. And uh, I have to miss him again. Story of my life. Story of my life. Thankfully, the Kiss show in a couple weeks got rescheduled till March. So I got time to save up to go see Kiss because that is going to be an expensive ticket. Unless, of course, I can uh, blow somebody and get in. But uh, unfortunately, the white berry is not on my radar tonight or tomorrow night because I have to go to work after this. And then I have to work tomorrow night. And then I have to work Sunday. And then Monday morning at 5 in the morning, I have to be on set because I'm going to be an audience extra and get paid for it. Oh, <coughs> So we'll do a show on Monday night, I think. We will see. Howdy, everybody. Uh, we got some people in the chat room. Jacobus, go fuck yourself. Um, Bruce, checking in from Canada. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like double hoser time. Rob is in the house. Robbie Dwarf is in the house. Uh, Jacobus says, my mom turned me on to him as a kid. One of the first albums I ever bought. Yes. And Rob, of course, says, fucking Ward. Funny, Ward messaged me last night. Hey, man, are you awake? Give me a buzz. Ward obviously doesn't know that I re- despise talking on the phone. And uh, Ward's probably wondering why we always say effing Ward. But uh, it's all in good fun, Ward. It's all in good fun, buddy. We just like to blame you for everything. That's all. All in good fun. Make sure you guys hit up all of those great sponsors. Uh, please support them so they can support me. Because if you guys, that's how this whole sponsorship thing works, right? Um, especially on somebody that is on my level, where these are not, uh, hey, we're going to give you X amount of dollars every month. Um, more like, uh, hey, well, we'll send you some free shit now and then uh, for the advertising. And then if you guys, you know, support the sponsors, buy sponsorship, you know, buy merchandise from these great, great sponsors, then they go, you know what? We're making money off of Izzy's podcast. We should start sending him money. That would be great. And then I would be like, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I thoroughly enjoy that. I thoroughly enjoy that, that, that venture. So uh, that's, that's how it works. Until then, um, just, just support them. At least check out their websites and stuff. You know, check the shit out. Check the shit out. My God, Mega Cruise is coming up, and I'm very, very excited about that. Oh, my God. Let's go down this list of these great performers that are going to be on the Mega Cruise. Uh, Megadeth, of course. Still don't know what the uh, status of Dave Mustaine is, but I heard he's getting a lot better. Uh, We will see, but Megadeth will be on the boat performing in some kind of faction. Um, Let's see, megacruise.com. I should have had this pulled up already, but, you know. That's what pre- prepared people do. Uh, pardon me. Red Bull. Um, while I'm waiting for this to load. Uh, also, uh, if you are new to the show, please hit up all of the social media. That's right. Real Izzy Presley all the way across the board. And uh, the show page is another effing podcast. And um on that show page you can see a link that says paypal if you want to donate to the show if you don't want my t-shirts or anything like that you are welcome to send me money just by clicking that paypal link and i am all about that here is the lineup for the mega cruise which takes off out of los angeles in october and there is still time there is still time to get your butts on the boat. Myself and DJ Beef Brian Ott will be hosting karaoke on that, doing a gong show karaoke contest as well. 
and there will be a cruiser jam that I will be putting on, hopefully with members of some of the bands uh, joining in, just like we do on Monsters of Rock. And uh, that theme will be Kiss. I know, shocking, I know. I looked at it this way. There's going to be a lot of metal. There is going to be metal pouring out of our pores all day, all night. Let's uh, let's do something a little different, and uh, let's do Kiss. Mostly because I don't have to learn songs. Because I know them. <laughs> Megacruise.com, Lamb of God, Meg- Megadeth, headlining, of course, Lamb of God, Anthrax, Testament, Queensryche, Suicidal Tendencies, which I am very, very much excited for, Dragon Force, Overkill, Death Angel, Corrosion of Conformity, Phil Campbell and the Bastard Sons, Devil Driver, Doro, Oh, I bet you I can get uh, Luca and uh, Johnny D to play, possibly. Armored Saint, John 5, Metal Church. Oh, I should hit up Vanderhoof, too. Bisto Blanco. Oh, well, see, th- th- there's people I know on this boat. I can get them to jam. You're goddamn right I can, son. Uh, Tooth Grinder, Metalachi, and Mechanics. So it is going to be a good, good time. The uh, October 13th through the 18th, going out of Los Angeles. I believe the pre-party is on the 12th. Um, it's going to be awesome. Cannot wait. So appreciative of uh, Mr. Morand and everybody at On The Blue for uh, having us involved in it. So hit up the mega cruise. Yeah, uh, Rob Z says... Uh, Izzy for Canadian Prime Minister has officially him and Nikki had poutine and Caesars. I'm not a Caesars guy. I'm not. It's a bloody, if you guys don't know this, it's a bloody that has clam clamato in it. And uh, not a fan. Not a fan. Not, not my thing. I like a good old school Bloody Mary. That's right. I did just get back from Canada. Uh, Rob, still waiting to, to hear on the number. Um, see how much money we raised. For the Killer Dwarfs annual charity golf tournament. Hopefully they do it again next year. Um, Because you know goddamn well I'll be there. If they offer it, I'm there. That's all I got to say about that. But uh, I would love to hear the number um, on what we raised. Had the most golfers that they've ever had. Mostly because they wanted to see me. Fucking word. I know. Um, Great dinner. The Dwarfs jammed. I jammed with... uh, with Rob and, uh, not Rob, um, I, I jammed with uh, Johnny and, uh, hey, close to 10,000. See, there you go, buddy. There you go. We did good. Next time, next time, no, next year, we're going for 15. Going for 15,000 next year if they have it. That's just, that's my goal. 15,000. Uh, got a jam with uh, Jerry and uh, Jerry and Johnny. Um, did a little 2,000 man and shock me. Um just it's just a great time for a you know a great event for a great cause and uh happy and proud to be pr- part of that along with my good friend and arch and en- arch enemy arch nemesis nikki black we had a blast we drank a lot it, basically it was six days of being drunk fucking ward the party afterwards at rob's house People at golf showed up with multiple, multiple, multiple cases of beer. And uh, the the night before we were kind of, or the night before I left, Monday we were, uh, <laughs> I was getting ready to leave and because I was leaving the next morning. And Rob was like, oh, Jesus Christ, I just found five more cases of beer. It's like, gee, uh, fucking Ward. It's all Ward's fault. I, 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 it's all Ward's fault. I say it's all Ward's fault. Because, you know, everything fucking Ward. But no, we had a blast. Uh, I appreciate the hospitality. Those great hosers up there. My uh, my liver does not, of course. But um, had an absolute fucking blast. Got to go to the, uh, not the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but the uh, Hockey Hall of Fame. That's right, the Hockey Hall of Fame. And saw zero things about the Minnesota Wild. <laughs> One Minnesota North Stars jersey. <laughs> That's it that's all we had but you know we got to see the holy grail got a nice uh polaroid with the holy grail myself and rob did um the gretzky and um gordy howe display was pretty goddamn cool the uh the uh the canadians locker room display was pretty badass got you know got to see the goalie god patrick was gear 
in a locker. That's pretty goddamn sweet. And then we're done. Then we walk out and looking through the gift shop. Not a single Minnesota Wild jersey. Not a one. It's like the Wild don't even exist to the Hockey Hall of Fame at all. Yes, obviously there's no members of Minnesota Wild in the Hall of Fame. But you can at least represent the team somehow. I mean, we are the state of hockey, for Christ's sakes. The state of hockey. Of course you guys slept for three days straight after after I left. I slept for three days straight as well. Because I had to deal with jet lag on top of the hangover. Good Christ. And also, uh, Robbo and uh, Nikki and I went to the... Uh, Uh, What's this joint called? Hold on. I got my ticket stub right here to the ROM, which is a uh, very, very prestigious place in Toronto. It's basically a a museum, but they had the Kirk Hammett display there of all his old school uh, horror movie posters. And that was pretty badass. And then we went to have uh, went to have Boutine with uh, Daryl Dwarf and Stracy. It was fun. It was a good time. The poutine was amazing. I had a blast. I, I absolutely had a blast. I, I love it up there. I love those hosers. Could not bring myself to try the ketchup potato chips. Mm-mm. Not a chance. Couldn't do it. I did try the all dress, which were, uh, it was a little too much. Just a little too much. I, it, it, I mean, they weren't bad. I mean, they were potato chips, but I, I just could not bring myself to try the ketchup. I couldn't do it, and I, I've got hosers from all over Canada giving me shit. Dude, the ketchup is the best. I, I just can't, I can't fathom ketchup flavored potato chips. I can't do it. I can't do it. I know those hosers up there just love them, but I just can't do it. Speaking of hosers, um, speaking of hosers, uh, Priya is going to be coming back on the show when her singles are ready to come out. Priya Panda. Uh, we know her from Diamonds, and she lives in Burbank here. So, uh, you know, she's a good friend. I'll have her back on the show. So that was fun. That was a good time. I, I, I love it up there. I love it up there. I, I, I really, really enjoy it. It's like uh, It's almost like a trip home. Uh, cause it looks a lot like Minnesota. Um, just the accents are better. Accents are much better. Minnesota accents are not attractive and we've covered this. Oh yeah. We're for sure going fishing up there to Malax this weekend. No. Ugh. Ugh. Oh yeah. I was actually talking like a hoser for a while. I picked it up pretty good. Picked it up pretty good. It's what happens when in Rome talk like the Romans do. Talk like, hold on. I've got a Facebook booty call here. Uh, We'll be done in 30-ish. Okay. There's that. Oh, see, well, yeah, but Jenna, you're not, you're, you're an American kid. You're an American kid. You're a hoser by, uh, you're a hoser by marriage. Uh, Bruce says, nope, suck, hate them, no ketchup chips. All right, there's a there's a true hoser. Uh, Jacobus, of course you like ketchup chips. Jacobus, of course, likes Jacob, ketchup chips. Jacobus, I want to know, are you excited for this Facebook dating app? Because I kind of am, uh, and I'll tell you why. Because uh, now, much like Tinder, when you come across people you know on Tinder, uh, you will... <laughs> Canadian by injection, uh, the hot beef injection. <laughs> that was cool. Because much like Tinder, the Facebook dating app, you swipe on people you know on Tinder, and if you don't match, you know goddamn well you are never going to see them naked. And with the Facebook dating app, the exact same thing. You will find out exactly who you have the chance of ever being naked with in the same room. And I'm rather excited about that because then, you know, you know if you're friend zoned or not, even without having to ask them out 
or try to make a move. You know, uh, that that rejection is gone. You you know if you're that dick in the glass jar that gets put on the friendship zone, uh, in the friendship zone cabinet, you know, break in case of needed. You know, break in case I get my heart broken and then you're there to be my friend. Yeah, we know, we know goddamn well where we stand. We know goddamn well that we are going to end up on that shelf or or we know that we will get to have sex and we like that yeah 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 thank you pat fontaine uh rob says you and jeff should switch pictures and see who gets more hits uh no because i'm much better looking hey he jeff looks like uncle fester a thin version of uncle fester a thin horny perverted version of of Uncle Fester. That is Jeff Jacobus. And I look, I appreciate that. But, you know, I, I got the long flowing locks. You know, uh, yeah, I got the dad bod. I'm not going to lie. I look like a pregnant WNBA player. But, uh, you know, I'm tall. Uh, I'm lanky. I could use some muscles. I, I thought about that. I'm thinking about going to the Goodwill and finding some weights so I can uh, develop at least some arm muscles. You know, so I don't look like such a string bean on stage. String bean who's pregnant. But I'm thinking about it. I don't know. I got to get that DDP yoga back from Falazzo so I can start doing that again and not be fat. Plus, you know, get back on this NSNG thing. If you guys missed Eliza James on on Wednesday, that was a fun, fun interview. She plays with Burt Bacharach and Paul Anka. And uh, her dad called in. We, we, we called her dad, which was a lot of fun. Dr. Dave is now part of the show. He's part of the part of the part of the uh, another effing podcast family. He really is. And I have a feeling that even when she's not on and Eliza might turn into a co-host on this show um, from time to time when she's around. She's obviously on tour a lot because she plays with two iconic legends. Um, and then, of course, we're going to get into at the end of the show is if it will continue. Not her, me. Because it's frustrating. It's really, really frustrating. Not based on shows like this, because I know this isn't my best work. We know when I'm on, and that's always when I got something to bitch about, and I can rant for 45 minutes on something that has nothing to do with anything. When I'm just trying to talk, when I'm just talking about nothing, eh, that's when it gets bad. That's when it gets bad. Let's get to these news stories. Um, let's, uh, let's look at this. Hold on. Let me, okay. I, I had it up. Um, but, uh, oh, let, let's look at this, uh, because there was a, uh, we don't have to look at the Facebook dating app safety features. Looks just like Tinder. And it tells you how many mutual friends you have. So that's a bonus, I guess. Um, let's, okay. Close that out. Go to Facebook. Go to Saved. Taylor Swift. Uh, first, uh, Nicki Minaj. Do we have to talk about Nicki Minaj? I mean, she's leaving the game to start a family. Uh, what game are we talking about? Because she's not a fucking musician. She's just some fucking hack rapper that got famous because she has a fat ass. And I don't mean fat and P-H-A-T fat. I mean fat and, you know, ghetto booty fat ass. And that's not a black joke. Not at all. Let's talk about this Tool and Taylor Swift thing. Because Tool, Tool is going to overtake. Um, actually, or or did they? Did they finally overtake her uh, with the number one album in the country? Number one album. This comes from Revolver Magazine. Twa- Taylor Swift fans are freaking out over this quote unquote unknown band Tool knocking the pop star from number one. Who the fuck is Tool? And can they move their fat ass like genuinely no idea who that is? Am I the only one? Do you have a Google machine? Do you have a Do you have a computer? Can you get on the Google if you don't know who they are and maybe Google them and go, oh shit, these guys have been around for a long time and they're uh, pretty goddamn famous. Hmm. 
Tool's long-awaited and worshipfully reviewed new album, and I'm going to say this, I am not a Tool fan. Not Never got them, never understood them, and uh, in their defense, uh, they don't understand their popularity either because they are weird. They are weird. I never got Tool. I was never a fan. I like that song, Arizona Bay, because it's all about Bill Hicks. Tool's long-awaited and worshipfully received new album, Fear Inoculum, is currently on track to upseat pop star, pop superstar, I'm sorry, Taylor Swift's latest collection of sugary bops, Lover, from its spot at the top of the Billboard chart. While metal fans and Gen X dads everywhere are surely stoked at the prospect, Swifties, I'm sorry, see, can you, can you, can you can you get somebody who's not fucking 12 to write these articles? You just called Taylor Swift's fans Swifties. Can, can we use adult words, please, of a certain youthful age, seem perplexed as to just who the fuck is taking down their beloved blonde princess? I'd do her, by the way. You know, I'm principal. Just so it could be a story about me, a song about me. And they're encouraging fellow lover lovers to keep up the streaming to fend off the mysterious potential unseating. Scroll below for some of the finest internet moments from the Swift fan freakout. So, oh, let, oh my God, there's an internet freakout? Why? Why would... It, it never happens. Uh, this one's dumb. Stream lover, we need to beat Tool. Taylor will win, not Tool. <sighs> Keep streaming, guys. The band tools. The band tool is dropping a new album after 13 years. Laugh my ass off. 13 years. Okay, but well, uh, is okay. But we still have a chance. Stream lover, Swift harder. Also, YNTCD and lover seems to be doing so well. We have to work. We have work. I, I thought these would be better. 16 year old Taylor Swift fans have no clue who Tool is. But freaking out that they're going to surpass her in sales. And it's hilarious. Apparently, the really big 90s after a 13 year comeback. One length. Why is somebody calling me now? This is probably about my gig tomorrow or a gig on Monday. They can leave a message. Because uh, they're currently selling more copies. And I thought this would be better. Their last album was released. So this one's apparently. Uh, can, can can you make this easier? Can you really make this easier, Revolver? I thought you were a professional gimmick here. I really thought you were a professional gimmick. Uh oh, their latest their last album was released ten years ago, actually thirteen. Chow Min Duck. Well, you're kind of cute, and I'd bone you. Years ago, and this is apparently has more pre-orders on iTunes. A lover just wait and hope. I thought this would be so much better. I really thought this would be so much better. Oh my God, the length of each song made me shook. That's what she said. This, this I, I was, I got, I had so much more anticipation for this. But this is, of course, was this is what happens when you know sixteen-year-olds have Twitter accounts. Oh, yeah. What can you do? What can you do? But, uh, yeah, it's looking like those things are good. The, the tool boys are going to overtake the Taylor Swift. Oh, let's see. Robbie says, if Tinder is swipe left or right, is it wrong to swipe up or down for the Facebook app? Is that considered masturbation? Ah, fucking ward. Um but actually, if you swipe up on Tinder, that means you super like them. So I don't I, I don't know because I, I signed up for the Facebook gimmick. And all you got to do is go in to uh, your Facebook app on your phone and then click that little uh, three line gimmick on the bottom and then click on dating. Um, and you're all set up. But we aren't suggesting people in your area yet. When we do, we'll notify you so you can see them here. But you can also put a secret crush in there. So if your secret crush likes you, then you know that you have a chance to see them naked. And God bless boobies, ladies and gentlemen. 
God bless boobies. First half of the show brought to you by Beater Amplification. That's two E's, B-E-E-T-E-R. Check them out, all you badass guitar players and bass players out there. The uh, TCB1 will be ready soon. Uh, three channels of 100 watts of testicular fortitude. Just amazing. Pull two tubes. You have yourself a 50 hand wired, hand built. They are awesome. Uh, yeah, Rob, I don't think Taylor Swift would come on my show. Um, and uh, I actually, speaking of the tool boys, uh, Eddie Trunk has been getting dissed by uh, uh, their guitar player, Adam Jones. Um, and Adam's like fucking with him. So I sent Adam a message saying that, uh, come on my show, we'll, we will call Eddie Trunk while we are on the show just to rub it in. But uh, I got no response. Then again, I'm a nobody. I'm a nobody, which is what we're going to talk about in the next segment. So head out, beateramplification.com. That's two E's. B-E-E-T-E-R. Take a short little break. Be right back with more of the Izzy Presley Show. If you need to promote your band or business or just want to stylize, personalize, or customize your ride, check out vid-decals.com. Want to create and customize your own stickers representing your band or make your own bumper sticker? Vid Decals can do it. All stickers are printed on quality vinyl and can be placed on any flat surface. Stickers are an affordable way to promote your band or business. Go to vid-decals.com to get started. That's vid-decals.com. Vid-decals.com. Rockwood Saloon Authentic Apparel takes rock and roll fashion to a new level with their tees and tanks for men and women. They also make custom shirts, jackets, vests, pants, hoodies, beanies, and more. The Rockwood Graphics Department can design anything from your logo, t-shirt design, promo posters, band swag, and printed at great prices. From tour shirts and custom stage gear to killer threads from the street to the stage, Rockwood Saloon has it all. Rockwood Saloon, authentic rock and roll apparel for stage and street. World Tour tested for quality, comfort, style, and durability. Check them out at www.rockwoodsaloon.com. That's rockwoodsaloon.com. Retro Arcade brings Minnesota and surrounding areas arcade games from the days gone by. All of those great games from pizza joints and arcades are available in cocktail units and custom machines. Dozens of favorites from your youth in one machine to complete your game room or man cave. Retro Arcade also sells and services your favorite pinball machines. Find them at facebook.com slash 80 arcade. That's facebook.com slash 80 arcade. Retro Arcade. Your youth is just one click away hey what's going on this is tom arnold i like uh fat women and cocaine and you're listening to izzy presley here on another uh fucking podcast and uh, i know izzy uh from cocaine anonymous meetings i've actually uh seen him at the meetings with uh uh ace von johnson from uh i probably shouldn't say this out loud but ace has got a bad coke problem and uh his sponsor is uh is uh josh todd from and again i shouldn't say this out loud but josh is a sponsor for buck cherry he's addicted to upskirt porn and uh and they're both being sponsored by the eagles uh, the whole band, the Eagles. There's, anyways, uh, another fucking podcast right here with Izzy Presley. And uh, call your sponsor, fucking A. Uh, fucking Ward. Second half of the show brought to you by A and P Productions Laser Engraving Division. Um, anybody that has a sidearm, look them up. They can laser engrave your sidearm and make it all special and uh, and uh, you know laser engraved. How was that for a read? Huh? Make it all special and, you know, laser engraved. They're badass. They know what they're doing. They, uh, they actually do a lot of military guys and a lot of cops uh, pieces um, and handcuffs and shit. All of them get, go into that A&P Productions laser engraving and get that shit laser engraved. Get it personalized. Make it their own meat. You know what I'm saying? And also, uh, John Palumbo Design. We love us some John Palumbo over here at Another Effing Podcast and the Izzy Presley Show. John Palumbo Design. If you need a band logo, you need a business logo, you need a website done, there is only one place you gotta go and one band you gotta talk to. And his name is John Palumbo. At John Palumbo Design. And I'm not sure what the website is. If just go on Facebook. You'll find it all. You'll find it all. I'm disheartened. And uh, I'm disheveled, and I'm wondering if I can continue. Not tonight. I'm going to finish the show, goddammit. Fucking Ward. 
But I mean in general. I, I get frustrated. I, I, I look at the numbers, and the numbers constantly go down. Is it this show that's driving the numbers down? Do I need to just stick with the interview show? I don't know. I know what I do need. And I'm too lazy to do this myself. And I should be doing this myself, but I haven't done this in a long time. Is I need somebody to write press releases for me after the interviews. So I can send them out to Blabbermouth, to uh, all the other uh, all the other places. Because if we have stories and press releases, they will get posted on eddytrunk.com and then picked up by other news outlets. And, and generate more listens to the show which i would very much love and we were on a good streak there for for a couple years until i got lazy we were on a great streak we were doing well i mean even without news bearing interviews i was you know i was pushing 700 listens a week um but that has dropped considerably now that I've been doing three shows a week, I've been almost getting up to that number. Almost getting up to that number. 700, 800 listens a week. But that's doing three shows instead of one. So I don't know if the Izzy Presley show has destroyed this. I don't know if this show that I am doing right now has wrecked it. It sucks because I really love doing this show and I love doing the interview shows. But... It's frustrating because the low numbers means less interest, means uh, less chance of getting bigger names on the show. So there lies my dilemma. Ah, uh, yes, Scotty, you missed the Canadian talk, but uh, there the hosers in here are outnumbering the Americans at this moment. So uh, your boys are here and gals or and gal so there's still plenty of canadian talk going on we talked about the uh the the ketchup chips uh we talked about the hockey hall of fame we talked about uh the rom uh we talked about uh our livers and how the dwarfs nearly killed me making me drink too much fucking ward it's all that ward's fault it's all ward's fault so there, there lies a dilemma. I was annoying or trying to annoy Kevin Smith at Devin, at that Kevin Smith on uh, on Twitter with no response. At least Mark Hamill, when we were annoying him, was nice enough to uh, send me a private message and say, hey, look, it's, uh, I have no control. It's all up to the mouse now. And uh, he was very cool about it. He was very, very nice. Um, no response from Kevin Smith. And I've been annoying him for like fucking three months. Nothing. Um, I know I do have, uh, in a couple weeks, I do have Robbie Crane from Black Star Riders coming on the show because they have a brand new record coming out. Um, Bobby Brown said she's going to come back on the show. I was hoping to do that this week. Uh, maybe next week. I don't know. I'll figure it out. Um, Michael Starr from Steel Panther is coming back on the show. Um, still trying to uh, rub the right cocks to get... Uh, John five on the show, you know, maybe caress some balls a little bit when you have to. Um, that's obviously a possibility. Uh, I mean, the one thing that I do have going for me is the, the amount of listens that I've compiled over the six years doing the show. So I've got that. I mean, it's not like I'm, you know, one of these guys that has uh, 10 listens a week, you know, and Eddie, I think Eddie might be coming on the show. Uh, later on this month if he has time when he's in town um, that was supposed to happen you know for a few months but it always just it just never works out um, so I don't know man I, I don't know it, it's disheartening it's like I, I love having this outlet uh, I love you know having a microphone in front of me because that's really the only time that I talk I'm not much of a talker I mean Robbie you know that Robbie and Jenna, you know that. I just kind of sit back and take it all in when I'm not on a microphone. I get a microphone in front of me and I don't shut up. It's the only way I can flirt with girls is when I'm on stage with a microphone. I can't flirt in person. That's impossible. 
Impossible. It's hard. That's what she said. So I, I love having this outlet to do this. I love having this outlet to go on rants. And I love having this outlet to interview people that I absolutely adore in a totally non-gay way and more of a, you know, I look up to you and you're a cool person and you're my friend and I enjoy, you know, having people like that on the show so I can get their stories and I don't know their stories. So I don't know. It's, I mean, what what do you guys think? What, what do you, I mean, I know you guys don't want me to go away. I mean, do I go back down to just doing the one show a week and, uh, I don't know, because it's a lot of work. I know you think it's not. I just turn on a microphone and talk for an hour, but I mean, there's other shit I could be doing. I could be practicing guitar. I could be practicing. I could be writing jokes. I could be uh, <laughs> lifting weights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. <coughs> <coughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, more Canada content. I think I have more hosers listening than I do Americans at this point now. And I don't mean just tonight. I'm huge in Canada. Means a lot of you have small cocks up in Canada, I guess. Ah. Oh, I slay me. I'm just kidding, of course. So I don't know. I mean, Darcy, you're a brand new listener to the show. You haven't experienced the Izzy Presley show yet. This is your first time experiencing the Izzy Presley show. I, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know what I do. What I want to do. I mean, uh, every once in a while, I get a nice little uh, donation to the show, and I appreciate that. Izzy Presley at yahoo.com is your PayPal. Um, you know, it all helps. It all. I would love to make it. You know, put it towards the show, but you know, driving Lyft it makes it tough. Plus, there's other. You know, there's other things I want to do. Like I want to get hammers and hammers. I want to get cameras. Because I want to broadcast live on Twitch as well, but my computer won't handle it. So I think I need a new computer, and that's not cheap. Um, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, Sledgehammer checking in. Uh, he sent a nice donation about a T-shirt. I still owe you some pics and stuff. I have a, a little prize pack. I'm going to send you for doing that. Uh, I just tuned in a minute ago late and drunk as well. You should be. Chill out or you're overthinking things. This is the best part of your shows. Uh, if you have come up with a third name, went, went to interview people and speak your mind, I think you're totally off base. This isn't the problem. It's something else. I don't know. Give me a minute to think about it. Uh, well, your shit can. So those <laughs> you're drunk fucking ward. Ha ha ha. Oh my God. I don't know. It's, it, it, it's hard because. And I've said this before, and it's, uh, you know, it's like the music industry. Now that everybody has a computer, now that everybody has a computer, anybody can make a record. And now that everybody has a computer, anybody can have a podcast. Now, I came up with the name Another Effing Podcast six, six and a half years ago before I moved out here. Because at that time, everybody had an effing podcast. Now, I was, that was kind of a joke. Now it's true. Everybody does have a fucking podcast. Just on Apple, I, on iTunes, on Apple Podcasts alone, there's 700,000. 700,000. So the fact that I get my uh, six, 700 listens a week between the three shows... I'm very appreciative. Don't get me wrong. Rob says you're bigger in Canada because of 35% exchange rate. Uh, does that add weight on me too? Because I felt fatter when I came back. Um, no, I think that was just all the beer. Fucking Ward. Uh, Darcy chiming in. Eliza, James got me into it. I think you're great. It made me start thinking about content. You're a natural. Oh, thank you, man. Well, go back and listen to some of the old shows. <laughs> we'll see how fast that lasts. See how long that lasts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Pat Fontaine. Um, so that's it. That's that's my dilemma. It, it's frustrating. Um, I I admit there is laziness on my part because you know I have been doing this for six years and I get lazy. I get lazy. Uh, re, you know, the, not reaching out to people that to bring on the show, um, and, and that's a tough thing because once you open the open the door 
to somebody who's not really on a national level, then the floodgates open up. And then you get everybody, hey, have my band on. Hey, have my band on. So you have to pick and, uh, pick and choose your battles on that. You know, it has to be somebody that's going to identify with the audience. It has to be somebody that is going to uh, hopefully turn into something. Because if you have every Tom, Dick, and Harry on the show, then all of a sudden you got fucking cover bands coming on. And I'm in one. I should know. So it's tough. It's tough. It's like, who's going to generate listens? And like I said, I need somebody to write press releases for me because I just don't have time. I mean, I suppose I could make time, you know, instead of taking that mid-afternoon old old man nap. But the problem is I get done with the interview show and then I uh, jump in the car, I go work, and then blah, 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 blah. Uh, sledgehammer checking in. There's a lot of people that that's great. You should really be proud of that. I listen to most of my podcasts while I'm at work and I struggle almost every day finding things to listen to. What I want from you is more content. I want you to do more podcasts, not less. Well, Sledge, and this is uh, this is the other problem with that, too, is right now I'm paying $20 a month to Spreaker, um, and that's for a certain amount of time per year. And I can broadcast live up to three hours a day, um, but those three hours... Or, but, so every hour that I'm on the air takes away from those complete hours. And, of course, we, know, we do know I, I do the show live every night, well, three times a week. Um, so in order to, if I did do this show five nights a week, for instance, um, I would need a co-host full time, at least one. Um, and I'm not set up for that. I mean, I am, but uh, it's just more gear I need to buy. I mean, I'm set up for one or two people in the studio, but uh, it's just um, I need more gear. I, I really do. I need I need cameras. I need a, a bigger interface. And that shit adds up. It, it really, really does. Uh, Darcy, I, I'm in a cover band, too. Nation, no shame in that. Yeah, I know. I, I just like picking on people. It's all, it's all a good fun. I have an Ace Fraley tribute band. Very, very niche thing. Very, very niche thing. Oh. Dude, I wish I wasn't. I'm in Canada. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, Rob Z says, Sledgehammer, just like that ugly person at the bar, you have to be a bit buzzed to listen to this show. <laughs> oh. Uh, as far as the relaxed format, that is the best part of this podcast. Yes, Izzy and I are friends by listening to this podcast because it's fun and natural and not scripted. Yeah, that's the thing I hate. I will not do a scripted show. Um, what you hear on here is the real Izzy Presley. I know honest, humble, knowledgeable, and honest to a fault. Yeah, that's me. Uh, I love how sometimes you go into the shows as a Scotty fresh and, and do discovery with the artist. Oh, I love that. That's the best thing. And that's not the lesson I'm talking about being lazy. Uh, I, I, I'm talking about being lazy as a, as far as um, press releases and uh, promotion. Because those press releases are promotion because the more releases you're able to put out, if there's a story that goes with the show, um, the interviews at interview shows at very least, because there's nothing news and groundbreaking on the easy present show it's just me bitching about stuff um but with like the, the interviews on another effing podcast uh there's always a story in that interview and i need somebody to write a story about that story so i can send it out to blabbermouth and eddytrunk.com because i know the gal dana that that posts on eddie trunk eddie trunk's news on his website um and she's always happy to put my stuff up i just haven't been doing it and that that has seriously affected the listenership of the show because there's no news being generated and that's my fault and i've done some great interviews and there's been newsworthy interviews not huge groundbreaking news but you know shit that would have been posted it's just it's just pure laziness and uh i'm the first to admit it i really am and i i, I thought i was going to pick up steam about a year ago when we did the um um uh, uh oh shit what's the name of that band uh, God damn it, I can't remember. It was the one that I had to pull down. Um, Black Veil Brides. 
the bass player from Black Veil Brides is on. He was all fucked up, and I was all fucked up. <coughs> and uh, he said, come out and see us uh, next month because, well, you're never going to see us again. And he wasn't supposed to say that uh, because they never broke up and they never were going to break up. But uh, that thing exploded. But as a request for management, I took it down because I am not one to burn bridges and I don't want to have that um, black cloud hanging over my head. I am uh, I am not a super fan. I'm just a guy who likes to do some fun interviews. And I think there's a Canadian super fan that we all know that claims to be a journalist that uh, that does interviews. Or at least used to. And uh, our good buddy Phil Lewis took a nice shot at him the other night, and it was hilarious. I'm not going to get into it now, though, because then I would be calling him out. And I'm too good to do that. But anyways, um, yeah, there's that. There is that. So I guess uh, we're going to call that a night. I just got a lot of shit to think about. It's just it's just frustrating. It really is. You put so much work into something, and... Uh, Steve Connolly, what's going on, buddy? Thanks for joining at the very end of the show. Oh, my. Yes, you are correct, sir. Um, but anyways, I'm going to call that a night. I got to go out and try to make some money um, and be jealous of everybody that's at Barry Manilow this evening, the Hollywood Bowl. This has been the Izzy Presley Show. We will be back hopefully on Monday, depending on uh, how late the, uh, the shoot goes that I'm doing a background on. Um, and then, uh, hopefully on Tuesday with a guest, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. We'll get at least two shows next week. So it's been the Izzy Presley show. Let me hit my outro music. Please do support all the sponsors. Oh, you've been here the whole time. Make that money. <laughs> Straight pennies, homie. I love driving for Lyft. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for rubbing in, Pat Fontaine. Uh, sounds like I need a manager. Yes, I do. With all this overwhelming social media and everyone trying to name drop bullshit to baffle naive audiences, Izzy, stay true to yourself and keep real. We love you. Fucking Ward. Yeah, I do need a manager. I really, really do. I'm not lying. I don't think I'm a name dropper. I really don't. Anyways, uh, Izzy Presley at Yahoo.com is your PayPal. If you just want the link, go to another effing, pod, another effing podcast Facebook page and click on that PayPal link. Or buy t-shirts. Or, um, you know, follow Real Izzy Presley. Support the sponsors. I love these sponsors. And take off. When I lack in talent, I make up for a cock. Fucking Ward. It's the Izzy Presley Show.